good morning everybody i'm here to present my work on the cryopreserved donor corneal tissue first time used in india for therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty during covid-19 pandemic so 2020 there were strict lockdown restrictions and restriction even restriction of eye retrieval we could not do eye retrieval for large perforated corneas patient has literally lost their eyes because of unavailability of the cornea so that time question came in my mind for smaller perforation you have multiple options but what about the larger perforation are there any other corneas yes there are option of cryopreserved corneas so my is 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 the case series of nine patient 10 grafts are done one eye repeat tpk was done eight patients fungal corneal infiltrate one patient pseudo cornea he was severe neglected case of peripheral ulcerative keratitis procedure is unused cornea only unused cornea on completion of their expiry date are transferred under the lamellar flow hood temperature is minus 80 degree celsius special freezer is used it allowed indefinite preservation and it is only and only available with ebcrc mumbai no personal or financial interest travel time to mention here we did face the uh, many restriction in transport even a milk van patients relative went our staff went in the red zone of covid Tra travel time was 24 to 36 hour but maintain the cold chain the surgical procedure was used as routine for the therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty this is the cryopreserved cornea yes it did has more dm folds more stromal edema more epithelial defects compared to the usual therapeutic graft you have to just remove this graft from the vial and you can directly use it the surgical procedure five eyes large graft of 12 mm four eyes graft size of 7.5 to 9.5 this is 7.5 graft interrupted sutures 80 for more than 11 mm all the rims were sent for bacterial and fungal culture to know how safe is the cryopreserved cornea all the post operative routine for therapeutic cornea therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty was followed follow up range from 5 to 12 months so the results are persistent epithelial defects were there it healed over period of 1 month in 5 eyes to 2 to 3 months in 2 eyes recurrence of infection yes 4 eyes out of 9 one eye required repeat tpk 3 eyes we managed successfully with the medical none of them went into the end of thalmitis and to begin with we had larger fulminant ulcer to start with this is the patient with persistent epithelial defect at 1 month we advise amniotic membrane transplant he didn't underwent so 3 months it was completely epithelized this is the patient with repeat tpk first step post op again recurrence we did one more tpk but we could not save his eyes he underwent into the prethysis this is one more patient first patient with the severe puk neglected patient never worried for the follow up these are the four patient with recurrence all the donor rim were sent for the culture only one rim grew the aspergillus the same patient has recurrence twice but the second month uh, recurrence cannot be related to the first infection so cryopreserve is a very age old method ebcrc used the technique described by mosgan atal techniques there are different techniques also but all studies support inconsistent viability of endothelial cells so you can use it only and only for therapeutic purpose first time clinical use was done by onel p atal for therapeutic pkp there is a larger case series of 45 eyes 39 eyes they could save it without recurrence maintain the anatomical integrity but to note here their infections were smaller in size and average duration means the day from where you have started the cryopreservation till the date it was used surgically it was 9.5 in their case series and we our eyes were more than 1 year old and there are been reports of dal been done with this cryopreserved corneas so in short 10 cryopreserved cornea we used successful eradication in four eyes in first attempt there are recurrence but we managed successfully to begin with large ulcers we have as a usual in our indian scenario larger graft size longer duration of cryopreservation we could achieve anatomical integrity in seven eyes and we did face major major transport issues there are so many people involved for the success of this case series 
and to conclude just that do not forget the option of prior preserved cornea there are glycerol cornea also but when you don't give it even a normal therapeutic corneas mainly in the peripheral centers you can always keep uh, in your uh, mind that there are cryo preserved cornea which can be used for the maintaining anatomical integrity thank you thank you i think then we'll uh, end the session thank you thank you thank